the pirates. Amarada is speechless at the instant death of Janna and has no time to react before Mother Massacre grabs her, Gabrissa and Emiri, and the whole world warps around them before the water falls away and they're standing on a plateau looking over a massive open pit mine. Enemy attacks incoming already. Initial scan of primary fallback position finds it compromised. Secondary fallback position reporting as compromised. Tertiary fallback position compromised. Hive protocols engaged. Amarada, Amarada, what have you done? Gabrissa demands. They appear in the deep dark water. Saeed's shoulder glowing bright enough to be seen through the thin sleeve and the buckle of Buran's belt doing much the same. Both men land on the floor and take in the rapidly expanding cloud of blood and the choking gas of the dying woman. Buran reaches upwards and gently lowers her. It's the pilot, Janna. For a moment, there's a grin on his face as the fact he said that the woman had little stomach for bloody affairs before. But now, now she likely had no stomach at all, and it was a very bloody affair. Lower her further, please, Sai says even as he sheathes his toe her. She's brought down to his level as Baran kneels. Child, focus upon me. See me, know me. Keep your eyes open. Keep your mind alive. Biran watches as the man gathers Axiom and guides it to restore, cleanse, and revitalize the young woman. Dear girl, karma has come for you swifter than most, but it has come. Nature responds to all acts, righteous and wicked. You aided in criminal acts and now have paid the price. I, I offer you the chance to remedy them. Child, what have you done? Sai asks her and she seems confused before closing her eyes. Amarada awoke a mother massacre, a self-wielding super weapon. She does not tire, she is never satisfied, she always has a plan, and even when she was a flesh and blood woman, there was no warmth or compassion in her heart. You cannot bargain with her. You cannot reason with her. You cannot plead to her. She will kill everything standing in Amarada's way, even if she begs on her knees for the monster to stop. Amarada is now the main focus of Mother Massacre's plans. She will destroy everything on Vuxa that can stand in her way, then deactivate. Are there more of these things upon Vuxa? Sai asks as he gently takes Janna from Biran's hands and the large Canador points towards the still active computer terminals to signify his intent before slinking off. Yes, when a new major world is in view of the family or a new line established, they are gifted the Mother Massacre. Five of them. I know where another is, Janna says. Do you understand why you must share this knowledge? Sai asks her gently. Her eyes open again and she looks up at the massive cloud of blood that had poured from her with shimmering eyes. Yes, she says. Adequate, Mother Massacre notes as she scans the factory. It is being geared to synthesize chemical compounds into drugs and has all the necessary equipment for the requirements. Several of her head tentacles begin pointing downwards and small lasers start burning patterns into the floor and walls. The first drone she has created, the smallest, least conspicuous, and also most important drone to her growing forces, is performing its duty. She had managed to acquire sufficient kutha for this portion of the plan, but there was still much more. Resources must be acquired. Kutha was but one compound among many that would be needed. Tritite, ceramics, plastics, numerous lubricants, and of course acids would be necessary. Thankfully, the contents and production lines of this factory could easily be retooled to produce the plastics, lubricants, and acids. The acquired mining equipment would suffice for the tritite and ceramics in the small scale. But space and time was needed to increase productivity to acceptable levels. Only a fraction of her devices would actually need to be constructed by hand. The Kutha inscribor was one, at least the first Kutha inscribor was. The small device finishes laying a thin strip of Kutha into the burn pattern as she opens her tritite shell and pulls at the axiom. The area warps and shifts, and an entire factory has been stolen. She will require more. The all call is answered swiftly. We need to go on high alert. A brutal super weapon has been unleashed. It's called a Mother Massacre, and it does exactly as the name suggests. Brings about the mother of all massacres? Beck asks glibly. No joking, this is serious. I have put my sector on high alert for unusual movements around factories and to be on the lookout for unusual and unfamiliar drones and robots, particularly where there is a high amount of tritite in the composition. What's its MO? Miles asked. 
Unfortunately, although my source has given me every answer I have sought and supplied many more without prompting, she has limited information. However, the primary threat will be autonomous attack drones. The source is Jana Vaquis. She protested to the awakening of the mother massacre and was impaled through the stomach and left for dead for it. She has been fully cooperative. She has made no demands and has also offered the location of another. Say I begins before there's a massive tone through the communication array. Ah, it started. Damn, he switches to a secondary communication device. It goes right to an array friendly to the Undaunted. It's actually built on the Zalwar Undaunted Arcology. This is Cybora on Voxa 5. Communications compromised by a hostile party. Inform all other undaunted assets on this planet to utilize a secured emergency network. Confirm message. Message confirmed. Best of luck, soldier. The man on the other side says and Sai nods, then begins moving. He still has a map and was described the location. It takes a minute to pinpoint the pattern of islands that Jana had described but it comes up fast and he quickly is soaring out on his personal air car with Baron in the passenger seat and numerous mech assault girls behind him, a Proton-based communicator in his pocket and its matching twin in the possession of the heavily guarded Jana Vekas. If he has questions, she's promised to answer him fully and promptly. They descend and he and Baran share a look before parking the air car above the area. Baron lowers a scanning device and they find a large area with a plate of tritite above it. Enough for orbital scans and most surveys to only pick up a thin, tritite vein. But from an angle barely over the water, it showed up clearly. It holds up so far, Buren says before Sai nods. That it does. The car is yours. I'll splice in your devices into the computer below. Si says, standing up and walking, opening the door to lean out. He gestures to the modified flight suits and gestures for half to stay with the car and the other half to follow him. Then he dives into the dark waters below. The brand guards him for a time. Then he adjusts what it does. He likes the brand. You suffer to prevent future suffering. It feels balanced, worthy, as if you were paying forward the karma and blessing yourself. The water, cold, pure, and yet so impure in the salt washes over him. And he looks back to see that many suits of armor have followed. He leads them to where Jana had indicated. She has led him true. Mother Massacre must bring about a truly deep fear to the girl. The symbol of the Vakes is just a glint in the wall, and he runs the axiom through it. He is in a vaguely glowing place as he swims forward. There is a rush, and shortly afterwards the cache, or perhaps reliquary, is much more crowded with numerous mech troopers behind him. How many places are there like this around the world? Too, too many at least, Isel Sai replies as she swims forward. He then hooks up Byron's device into the terminal and activates it. The computer turns on and starts to go through a scan. The monitors show a dizzying pace of information, scanning as the Canador shows that he's likely even more dangerous when he can't bring his fangs, claws, plasma immunity, or natural gifts with heavy weapons to bear. The program goes through a thousand routines and he goes into the base files and starts doing some fast reprogramming. Then a panel on the wall opens and an enormous ghost-like figure is there. Somehow the sky blue of the tritite that forms the outer panels of the machine seemed to glow in the darkness. Well, that's not fucking ominous, one of the girls says, and Sai cannot help but nod in agreement to that. There is a flashing red light from the monitor as Biren does something, and the wall suddenly starts to collapse outwards, and the thin layers of metal are torn away as its containment pod is revealed to be designed for transport. It even includes latches for ease of gripping. The computer flickers and Biren's voice comes through. System just sent out a warning. Your position is known. Get out of there. You heard the man. Grab the case and make our exit, one of the girls orders, and two troopers move even as the commander turns around and levels a weapon at the cash wall. Wait, we're all in water. That will... It's not plasma or laser, as Sai was expecting but a concussion wave that shatters the wall and it lets out a rush of water. We need to... Sai begins as two things happen at once. One, there's suddenly a second one of the robots right in his face as something gigantic gives out a high-pitched rumbling call that shakes everything. His tollware is barely out as he pumps all the axiom he can to fend off all the suddenly moving fast, very sharp and very much in his face murder machine. 
Get the prize out! The secondary mother massacre is thrown out of the gap as the mechs gather to try and pin the stupidly fast mother massacre. Sayai's already bleeding from a dozen brutal cuts, and if not for his armored vest would likely have been gutted. Then a fist slams into his breastplate and tears away his shirt so she can see the reinforced metal. Insufficient. His breastplate starts heating up, but his brand is working overtime to protect him from the heat, which means he has time to further enhance his tool war and impale the machine woman through the side of the neck. Her hand comes up and grips the sword as her tentacles come back down. He's forced to abandon his weapon and back away. There's a grinding snap as the sword is snapped like a dry twig, and she slowly pulls it out in a pure intimidation move. Now, Sai Wakara barks out to galvanize his allies into movement as he twists in the water and grabs both his boot knives. They're out barely in time to catch the tentacles that are sent his way, even as Mother Massacre catches one fist and levers one attacker into another and takes on another attack with three tentacles to prove that she's very much the one at home in the water. Situation unfavorable. Mother Massacre states before she's suddenly glowing and then vanishes. You can teleport with Tritite? Sai demands before his eyes widen as he sees the gift she left behind. Bomb! He's tackled by a mech and pinned down as a field erupts from the armored woman. The depth charge goes off and the world is reduced to confusion as he hears stone shatter and metal scream just barely over the rushing water. Debris falls down and when the pirate stands up, she shifts thousands of pounds of rubble and stone. Before he can ask what's going on, there is a furious bellow of an enormous creature and the mirage wail that they had heard in the distance slams into the trench wall far below and shakes the shattered cavern. Time to move, the pirate says as she and her sisters blast out before even more stone can rain down on them. The second monster, have we lost it? The whale screams again and the enormous figure of a badly bleeding mirage whale rushes by and vanishes into the distance. Insufficient. Calculations adjusted. Mother Massacre states from below and Sai manages to spot her just as she teleports away with the pod. Damn! Mother Massacre reappears and frightens Amiri again. She's too close and holding a second Mother Massacre pod. She then grabs the terrified Vekas girl and places her on the pod. Your objective is to find a suitable place for this pod. She orders before turning away and walking to make personal adjustments to the stolen factory equipment. Regrets yet? Amiri asks Amirata in a sarcastic tone. Why did she bring a second instance and tell you to find a new place for it? Gabrisa asks as Amirata sputters. That brings up some reconsideration of the pod. Does it matter? She's already moving. She's hacked their network and brought it down. She's building the army. Vuxa will be ours again before the week is over. Amarada justifies. And then an entire army drops out of the sky to bombard us for daring to slaughter their people. Yes, everything is right on track. You fucking idiot. Amiri spits out. 